Good afternoon. This is Mike from Ford Observer. Thank you for watching. If you like my channel, please hit the like button and also subscribe so that you get notified about future videos. I'm reading a new book called When Money Dies, which is about hyperinflation in Weimar, Germany. What I've learned is pretty astonishing. This all started back in February and May of 2021. You might have seen Michael Burry talking about the risk of hyperinflation. If you've heard of Michael Burry before, it's likely in connection with a book and movie called The Big Short, which focused on his warnings prior to the 2008 financial crisis. When he started predicting earlier this year that the U.S. would have hyperinflation, I listened closely. I know pundits have talked about hyperinflation for years. We've heard from tons of websites and commentators that hyperinflation and an apocalyptic economic collapse and market crash was always right around the corner and don't take my word for it, I did a simple search for David Stockman in my inbox and I found these gems where he was warning about the financial apocalypse of 2018. He and many others, just like him, have been spectacularly wrong. All these folks were warning, get out of the markets, get out of the markets. And a ton of people got out of the markets and they missed gigantic gains because they didn't realize that the Fed was going to prop up the markets no matter what. If we've learned anything from the 2008 financial crisis, it is don't fight the Fed. But these people are still predicting hyperinflation, and they may be right one day, but after years and years of failed predictions, they will be right by accident. Meanwhile, given Burry's track record, I started reading books on hyperinflation. The one I'll focus on today is called When Money Dies. Keep in mind that I can't possibly cover every single historical aspect from this period, so I'm hitting the high points. First, we have to go back to World War I from 1914 to 1918, when Germany bet its future on invading France. Germany borrowed money to finance the war. They thought that the defeat of France would lead to war reparations that they could then use to pay back the debt. The Germans lost, and not only did Germany have to finance the debt from the failed war, now they had to pay war reparations themselves. In 1913, a German mark was roughly equal to one British shilling. By 1923, when hyperinflation really took off, it took a trillion German marks to equal one British shilling, if you could find anyone who actually wanted a trillion marks. Over the span of 10 years, the German mark became worth one million millionth of its pre-war value. When Money Dies offers a stark warning to any country that would fuel limitless spending with limitless debt. As author Adam Ferguson explains, the question to be asked, the danger to be recognized, is how inflation, however caused, affects the nation, its government, its people, its officials, and its society. The more materialist that society, possibly the more cruelly it hurts. If what happened to the defeated central powers in the early 1920s is anything to go by, then the process of collapse of the recognized, traditional, trusted medium of exchange, the currency by which all values are measured, by which social status is guaranteed, upon which security depends and in which the fruits of labor are stored, unleashes such greed, violence, unhappiness, and hatred, largely bred from fear, as no society can survive uncrippled and unchanged. Few Americans understand just how difficult this period was for the average German. And we all grew up reading about the wheelbarrows of German currency being tossed into the fireplace, but even that fails to give us an adequate picture. Following years of brutal conflict, where thousands of young men were absolutely massacred in several minutes just to gain an inch on the battlefield, German citizens lived through an absolute massacre of its currency. And this post-war period also led to political strife, rampant criminality, and near-civil war conditions between right-wing and left-wing factions at home. For now, let's look at the first-order effects of the money printing. Ferguson continues to describe the horror of this period. He writes, quote, Financially, for nearly four years, the ultimate cataclysm was always just around the corner. It always arrived, and there was already an even worse one on its way, again and again and again. The speeches, the newspaper articles, the official records, the diplomatic telegrams, the letters and diaries of the period all report month by month, year by year, that things could not go on like that any longer. And yet, things always did, from bad to worse, to worse, to worse. It was unimaginable in 1921 that 1922 could hold any more terrors. They came, sure enough, and were in due course eclipsed. 
and more than eclipsed with the turn of the following year. Now, it's also important to know that monetary conditions weren't merely political, military, and economic. There were also great social and cultural effects because even prior to the high inflationary environment of the early 1920s, right-wing factions and communist revolutionaries were fighting in the streets across Europe, but especially in Germany, and I will get to that in my next video. However, I want to take a look at how Ferguson describes this period of high inflation and the impacts of civil society. He writes, quote, Following the deprivations of wartime and crushing military defeat, the conditions were fundamentally unfavorable to any revival of national spirit not rooted in revenge. He continues, Undoubtedly, though, inflation aggravated every evil, ruined every chance of national revival or individual success, and eventually produced precisely the conditions in which extremists of right and left could raise the mob against the state, set class against class, race against race, family against family, husband against wife, trade against trade, town against country. It brought out the worst in everybody, industrialist and worker, farmer and peasant, banker and shopkeeper, politician and civil servant, housewife, soldier, merchant, tradesman, miner, money lender, pensioner, doctor, trade union leader, student, tourist. He continues, it caused fear and insecurity among those who had already known too much of both. It fostered xenophobia. It promoted contempt of government and the subversion of law and order. It corrupted even where corruption had been unknown and too often where it should not have been possible. Ferguson then points out that all this precluded the Great Depression and what came next. The major lesson, the major lesson so far is that hyperinflation is not just rampant money printing. It is when merchants and people of a country refuse to accept the currency in favor of a stronger currency. Ferguson describes when shopkeepers no longer accepted German marks for their goods. They said, we're not accepting the mark. Give us something of real value. Give us foreign currencies. Give us some real assets if you want to buy our goods. High unemployment, high food prices, and the populace who resorted to smuggling and banditry were among many factors contributing to this period of social unrest. And I mentioned in the last video about what happens to a society as the bandit class grows. It eventually faces collapse, which is exactly what happened to the Weimar Republic. Now, I'm reading these books on hyperinflation right now because I believe the risk to the United States is rising. And what I hope to gain by reading these books is some insight into exactly how it happens, what indicators to look for that we are following in the same footsteps, and how best to prepare. And as a reminder, I do write a weekly economic early warning report that is included in an early warning subscription. We do a, a daily brief and also a daily show Monday through Friday. If this topic concerns you and you want daily updates on how this all is progressing, then you should go sign up for my early warning report. You can do that at forwardobserver.com. Now to end, I want to share with you a quote from All Quiet on the Western Front which perfectly encapsulates World War I. A German soldier says, quote, The factory owners in Germany have grown wealthy. Dysentery dissolves our bowels. Smedley Butler was right when he said that with the exception of the defense of our homes and the Bill of Rights, war is a racket. Until next time, be well and stay out front.